Welcome back family, it's Kyle King here, your course instructor for classroom to boardroom. We are here guys, we made it to the final lesson and what we're gonna be talking to you guys today is about your corporate exit strategy. If you work a job, if you, if you are building that entrepreneurial um, vision, it's, it, it's very important for you and what we're going to talk about today, the overall objective of this lesson is to teach you the, the steps, um, like I always say, the strategies and the methodologies behind working in your job and how to properly, professionally leave your job as a person of integrity so you don't burn bridges so that you can continue to build the bridges. So what is an exit strategy? I would define um, exit strategy as a whole as you have some idea of leaving something, you have some want to do something maybe differently, but you really don't know, I guess, the first few steps to take in terms of leaving that job, leaving that relationship, leaving... Um, and jumping really into your purpose, your passion, your gift, whatever it is that you were called to do as we've been talking about the whole time of this course. So one of the biggest things, one thing that I learned um, is that a lot of people look at it a lot differently, but I, wa I want you to see your mindset and really, really see if this applies to you in any way. If you need, if you feel like you need a loan or you're waiting on the right opportunity of that grant or you feel like you need to go to the bank or you don't have enough, uh, enough resources, then I don't feel like the entrepreneurial space is for you. So this, this lesson is to really teach you that entrepreneurship entrepreneurship does not equal easy or convenient. It doesn't. It's not easy. It's not convenient. It's not, hey, I'm gonna go just get a loan from the bank and then I'm just gonna be an entrepreneur. I truly believe if you're leading with a loan, you're leading to lose. If you feel like you need a loan or you need um, this big check or you need all these different things, I'm going to tell you right now that you don't need to be an entrepreneur and maybe you should stay in that job. Maybe you should never take that leap. Maybe you should kind of stay where you're at. Because what I truly believe though is if you're able to problem solve, critically think, and be creative or innovative, you will be able to figure out a way to create multiple streams of revenue, to create multiple um, millions of dollars, multiple businesses, multiple all of these different things without startup capital. Now, startup capital is also dependent on the field that you're in because if you're an app developer, a web developer, all these different things, then you may need to leverage um, other people's resources. But I feel like if you're going in and just thinking, hey, I need a loan, or I don't wanna put in the work, my loan's gonna help me put in the work, I believe you need to put in the work first. Outwork the work, don't outplan the plan. A lot of people out here have a lot of plans, but until you get into that industry, until you get in front of those people, until you get in that field that you're working in, you won't really be able to realize how maybe that plan sucked and how you maybe were going to perform is not the way, or maybe how you were going to, to, to position yourself is the wrong position, and it's gonna really teach you as an entrepreneur how to figure out solutions to problems that really don't even exist. That's really what it's about. One thing that I learned um, in terms of leaving your job, in terms of taking that leap, taking that step, is to have your financial number. So we talked in this course about budgeting, we talked about fixed, var uh, fixed expenses versus variable expenses, we talked about income versus expense, all of these different things. So what is your monthly expenses? Let's say that number is 
let's say $5,000. And I'm talking variable expenses, and I'm talking fixed expenses, I'm talking about your kids' expenses, you go to the movies, all these different things, and then ch chop in the 30%, and then it gets you to $5,000 like we've talked about in the course. What I want you to understand is that I believe that you need to times this number by six, and this is your number. This is the number that you need to save. This is the, the number that you need to have. This is the number that you need to create. This is the revenue that you need to generate. Over a period of six months, you need to be able to have this before you leave that job. Before you go and take the jump, before you go and take the leap, before you take all of the different things, the steps that you're going, you feel like you need to take, I recommend, and after I heard it, I didn't recommend it at first, but I recommend it because you're gonna need some type of cushion if you get one word. What is the one word you think, guys? The one word is no. I believe that a lot of entrepreneurs come in with a plan for yes, and then they get no, and then they fall down. They fall down, they break down, they fall down, they, they don't know how to strategize, how to prioritize, how to plan a new step. Because the overall understanding, and we've talked about it throughout this whole course, throughout this whole program, is that the destination should never change. But sometimes our route to get there may look like this, or it may look like this, or it may look like something like this. As long as we get there, that's all that matters. The destination should never change. The mission never changes, but sometimes our route, sometimes our journey and the adventure, the adventure of ambition, the adventure of really still being able to affirm ourselves when things are tough through, through adverse, uh, adver adversary um, and, or adversity, the adventure is what is the best part. So really being able to leave that corporation, where's my eraser? Really being able to leave that corporation looks like this. I call it the balance beam of building a business. I believe right now, most people, hopefully, are giving their company 100%. You're giving it 100% focus, when probably 100% of the time constraint. So let's say that 100% is eight hours. Eight hours daily, you're coming in, you're, you're working your heart out, and then you start to see different things after watching these videos, after watching these courses, and you're like, hey, I do have a dream too, I know how to create a concept, now I know how to market, now I know how to scale, now I know how to sustain. I kinda wanna do kinda what you know Mr. King's doing. So what I want you to realize is that when this start when you start to work on your dream, and this is your job, when you start to work more on your dream, this takes this from 95% working on your job to 5% working on your dream. And then you get a little bit more minimum, it takes a little bit more time, and then eventually this is like 90% and this is like 10%. And then you start to see like, hey, you know, I need to start putting more time in my dream. I need to start really focusing more on what I want in my career and all these different things. So then it gets to the point where you drop this to 80% and now you're kind of filling this with 20%. You start planning, but you're, you're really staying, like, what I call this is, you're still, this is the productivity. You're still productive. Now you're not at maximum, but you're kind of doing enough to not get fired. You know, you're doing enough to not get fired, but you're still staying productive. Now, this is the part where the, I call it the shift. This is the shift. This is the part where you start giving 60% to your job and then 40% to your dream. This is the shift when you shift from job to then dream. When you can get to the point where you're spending almost 50% dream, 50% job, I believe that it's now time to focus 100% on dream and leave your job. That's my opinion. It's what worked for me. It's what's working for a lot of people in the space that I'm in as well. And the reason why I say that is because of one word. And that one word, we, 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 we overlook it and we don't, don't really stand behind it at times, but the one word is character. Character. You have to be a person of integrity because if you worked 
your whole life to be that CEO of that multi-billion dollar organization and you were managing your people or if you were a manager and you had your employees and you had your, um, your, your managers and people that also had dreams and visions and they were given your job 20% but then they were given your, um, their dreams 80% and your, your, your numbers were dropping, their productivity at the business was dropping, you would not be happy. You wouldn't. And I feel like if you do not have the integrity to honor your commitment, you cannot expect for your employees one day, for your team one day, for your managers one day to have the integrity and also the commitment. The commitment, the integrity, the values, the character starts with you. This is the type of that character will relate, will translate into the culture that you create within your company. As simple as that. That character to know when to leave will translate into the culture and help you lead your company. But if you're not operating in character, if you're not operating within integrity, if you're not operating in creating that culture within your company, then how are you going to ex how are you going to expect for your team from the people that you bring on from your personnel to be able to have that integrity for you? How are you, based upon our leadership course, how does that make you as a leader? Based upon our course on the one thing, how are you really operating within your one thing if you're not operating with good character? It's simple principles to being able to leave that corporate job and be able to get you to the place where you want to be within your life. And I want to talk to you about what is the benefit of working at a job. And I think that a lot of people, especially in this generation, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. It's kind of like the new trend. It's kind of like um, wearing, uh, it's like wearing a t-shirt that everybody's wearing now. Everybody just wants to say, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. And I understand that you have a dream. I understand that you have a goal, but just because you have a dream, a goal, a gift, doesn't make you an entrepreneur. Just because you have a dream, a goal, and a gift doesn't mean that you need to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is simply problem solving, critical thinking, and creative innovation at its finest. If you can't foster those three traits, you can have a dream as somebody else's employee, to be completely honest. Because if we all wanted to be entrepreneurs, we all wanted to be visionaries, then who would be the people that are working? Who, are, who would be the people that are working for us? Who will be the people that are working with us? Who will be the people, if we're all CEOs, that are actually running our companies? So you have to assess, before you can become the CEO of that organization, you have to assess, how am I the CEO of myself? So, as a part of three things that you should learn, and why, I guess, why, I believe that working for somebody is important because you get to learn what? Their systems, their successes, and their, let's see, uh, their shareable moments. Why I say these three things, because when I was interning, as I, as I talked about in our earlier course, I didn't learn just how to write an Excel spreadsheet. I didn't learn how to just sit and be quiet in a board meeting. I didn't learn how to deliver a presentation or all these different things. I learned those things in college. But what I did learn is how, do you, how are you running your business? How are you guys hiring? How are you guys letting go of people? What are the different processes that you have in place to be able to do all of these different things? What are the softwares that you are using to be able to execute these different things? How are you guys making money? How are you consistently making money? How are your board, ran, your board meetings ran? How do you create the organizational chart and who reports to who and why? How do you communicate amongst your employees when everything, there's so many different things going on? How do you keep the, the, ch the chain of communication fluid and, and, and uh, um, efficient and effective? All of these different things that you can be learning. See, when you learn systems, you create systems. And we learned about this in the leadership lesson as well. 
When you learn, when you serve, when you serve a job, you learn their systems. And then you're able to create systems so that you can now generate or earn your own profits. Second thing is to learn their successes. What is the thing, what are the things that are leading to your organization, your business, your staff, your company, your brand as a whole to be, or, uh, to be successful? If we can learn what, then we can learn how and we can learn who. But not just the successes, also the failures. Now we learn, because it's the African proverb that I mentioned to you guys earlier, it's a fool that learns from their own mistakes, but it's a wise man or woman that learns from the mistakes of others. So what you're going to do is you're learning what are they doing to be successful? How are they being successful? Like, what are the actual steps that they're taking to even be successful? And then who is leading the success? Who are the contributors? All this is actually is who are the contributors that are making things happen? Because now in terms of your organization that you're gonna, you're gonna create one day, that you're creating now, you get to figure out, okay, they have these people doing these different things as a part of this organizational chart. Who are the contributors that I need in my organization, in my life, on my team, to be able to lead these tasks and do them these ways to be able to get to this outcome? It's a system. It's a system of success that's going to lead you from point A to point B and implementing all of these different things based upon what? The information, learn information that you can implement in all of your systems that you're creating within your business, within your structure, but you don't just learn successes, you also learn failures. If there's missed deadlines, miscommunications, misunderstandings, all of these misses, that is the opportunity for you to make it. You learn from the misses so you can make it. You don't learn from the times where you made a million. You learn from the times where you lost a million. You don't learn from the times when you missed the game winner. You learn, well, you don't learn from the times when you made the game winner. You learn from the times that you missed the game winner. And the reason why is because you start to deal with those pressures. You start to be able to handle those controversies. You start to be able to handle those challenges and overcome those obstacles and then really get you to the point of organizational success where you are successful. The last thing is the shareable moments. This, my friend, is the most important in my opinion because these are the things in terms of collaborations. Who are they sharing their content with? Who are they partnering with? Who are they sharing these, these, these moments with? What are all of the different things that they're doing in terms of a business that we can create? When I worked with BMW, I thought that BMW was just a car company, that all they did is sell cars. They don't just sell cars. They do a lot of other different things. I thought that Disney was just an amusement park company and that's all they did. They own all of these other different companies. You have to learn business strategy, life strategy, life principles. The biggest thing in life is learning not what to do, but what not to do. When you learn what not to do, what does that help you? What, is that, what does that help you with learning? It helps you with learning what to do. Because if you are using these experiences within these companies to just teach you what you need to do, you're never gonna be prepared for what not to do. Or if you use these experiences to just complain about a job and then leave a job because you didn't like it or because it wasn't good for you, then how are you gonna plan for when companies or when, or, or when your employees want to leave the job because you never set the company culture, you never set the foundation, you never were the person of character that set the things to do based upon what you learned not to do. Don't leave your job until you have a plan. 
Don't jump into entrepreneurship and see you have a parachute. And if you jump into entrepreneurship without a parachute, you better be ready to build a plane on the way down. These are the principles that we've learned over periods of time, that I've learned over a period of time to be able to get you to be a successful entrepreneur, to be able to get you from out of the classroom into the boardroom, from out of the student seat into the leader seat and out of the manager seat or the employee seat into the leader seat where you can be leading organizations, inspiring people to change, impacting people through your message and be able to share these moments with the world so you can scale your business and scale your life. My name is Kyle King. I am your course instructor, the CEO and founder of the Shine Institute and we thank you for joining us in classroom to boardroom.